Engaging conversations about the Bible. This is the Remnant Thoughts Podcast with Ruskin and Jordan. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Remnant Thoughts Podcast. We have a special guest with us today, Pastor Joe Shelton, the the spotted hawk himself, the man, the myth, the legend. (laughs) And of course, Pastor Jordan is here with us as well. And so uh, we like to start off playing a little game, Two Truths and a Lie. And so, Jordan, I have a few things. And, Joe, if you want to jump in and try to guess which one is true and a lie, you're you welcome to as well. Um, Kentucky, and being it's Father's Day, I kind of kept a Father's Day oh, okay. theme going. But Kentucky man's second favorite son pins a funny obituary for his dad. He will be moderately missed. <laughs> One in five dads do not see their children on Father's Day, a survey finds. And the last one is, a father is praised by his children for paving the driveway, but then he has to admit, mom did it. (laughs) (laughs) So what do you think, Jordan? I don't know. Uh... I hope the statistical one about the one of five fathers not seeing the children is is untrue. Uh, but the last one sounds kind of kind of made up. Um, I can see something like my brother and I make a funny joke like that at my my father's funeral, <laughs> the second favorite son. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna guess the third one is the uh, false story about the driveway. Yeah. What do you think, Joe? I think it's, I think it's a toss up between the first one, the moderately missed. I think he used a little humor there, <laughs> and uh, the driveway. So I'm on. The driveway sounds so far fetched. I want to say it's the truth. That's right. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna go with moderately missed, and I'm probably moderately missing it too. Yeah. So. Well, that's probably the one I would have guessed too. Um, the driveway one, I just totally invented. The other ones are actual <laughs> headlines. And some of these headlines, I think the same way Joe did on some of these headlines. You think the most outlandish one, and that's the one they're tricking you on. So yeah, it must be the other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Jordan, you got some? Oh, those are good. Yeah, yeah, I got some. Uh, hiker lost on mountain for 24 hours, ignored calls from rescuers because he didn't recognize the phone number. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg says Meta employees lovingly refer to him as the Eye of Sauron. Yeah, because that's such a loving title. Yeah. <laughs> New study reveals listening to heavy metal music improves plant growth. <laughs> um. All right. So that hiker one sounds very far fetched, and I'm gonna go with Joe's strategy. Up, so it must be true. <laughs> And I imagine I've heard the music thing with plants, and I haven't heard it specifically with heavy metal music, but I've heard that. So I'm going to guess the second one. All right. I'm going to go with the second one, too. All right. The second one was true. The false one was the one about heavy metal music. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I, I, uh, fine detectives we are, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I threw that one in to throw you off. I had heard something like that a long time ago, too, just like in the back of my mind. But it is a fake headline. Okay. So, yeah, that was a false one. <laughs> the uh, the hiker, yeah, he ignored calls for, you know, his rescuers because he, he, he didn't recognize his, the number. His number, so. right? <laughs> That's right. And then Who's this stranger calling me? It might have been true, but he was stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mark Zuckerberg's employees lovingly call him the Eye of Sauron. Yeah, because that's such a such a loving <laughs> title, yeah. you know. I, <laughs> that's exactly what you want to hear your children or somebody refer to you as. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get on. So it is Father's. This is our Father's Day special. It's great to have Pastor Joe with us. Um, the the Spotted Hawk himself, right? Yes, sir. Akia de la Cho, Spotted Hawk, right? Okay. So is that how you say that? Yeah, Apache. Apache. That's Apache. what you say in Apache. Spotted Hawk. Okay. Very cool. Um, and so Father's Day, I know you've preached on Father's Day many times. Uh, I guess any of us could jump in, yeah. but when we think of Father's Day, you know, what, what kind of do we think about? Well, uh, I have so many things that go through my head right, right then because I think about, you know, naturally a Heavenly Father. Mm-hmm. But then that goes to my kids that I raised 
that now have their kids that they have their kids. I have great grandchildren. Yeah. But uh, that uh, that there's such a good illustration of the 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 father, the fathers, his love for us. Because no matter what our kids did, we it's it, it, we loved them. Mm-hmm. You know, we loved them. I I got. Uh, I don't mean to talk too much and let you have some, but we got uh, Stormy, who you know, she has lived up to her name. She, <laughs> we should have named her Calm or Peace, but we named back in Hippie Day. We named her Stormy, and uh, and and you know, no matter what she did, it didn't matter if she could have grown up to been uh, uh, you know an axe murderer, and I'd have went down to the prison every Saturday and said, "Wish I could hug you, I didn't love you, you know, yeah. stuff," and because uh, that's the way the fathers love. It just. Amen. Uh, Unconditional, they say towards. Now I can't find a Bible verse that says his God is unconditional. His love is unconditional. We just know, as far as we, as his children, it is. Mm. It is. So I, I, my son called me yesterday. Said, "Where does it say in the Bible God's love is unconditional?" So I said, "Well, it." And then I found out it really doesn't say it like that. It just does it in his actions so many times like that. Mm. So, uh, you mind some comments on that, brother? I, I agree with you. You know, when I think of Father's Day and I think of fathers, I, I think of our Heavenly Father. And, um, you know, what a great father he is to us. Um, maybe I should have started looking at it in, in my Bible before uh, before I started mentioning it. My, my immediate thought went to uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6. I think it's verse 33. Um but, but you know, the hymn, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all yeah. these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That whole passage right there, you know, talking about uh, the birds and the trees, you know, they're not concerned about the things that we're concerned about. Yeah. How much more is our Father in heaven who loves us, you know, going to uh, take care of us? Take care of us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That'll be right. Yeah. Well, let me say something, too. Since since I'm on here and we're talking, it's on, somebody, it's on the screen up there. Uh, I'm not trying to be cool with these sunglasses. I'm self-conscious about wearing them. I got an eye infection, and it's just like leaking and stuff and blurry. So if I keep the glasses on, it don't do it for some reason. So uh, I'm not trying to be a, a rock star. I'm a little too old to be a rock star. Now. <laughs> but but uh, that's what I just let you know that. So if anybody is watching, they don't think, well, why don't you take his glasses off? Well, I got an ear. My eye be falling way down here. You wouldn't want to see that, see? Yeah. Well, I'm not trying to be cool either. So <laughs> yeah, we are. I think uh, the times I tried to be cool, I, I might have failed. Yeah. <laughs> I can remember even. If you try to be, you ain't. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because when you're trying, it no longer yeah, is. That's right. That's right. I remember my grandfather years ago, we had a swimming pool. And my grandfather, he, he come from military background, Air Force, police. And we went to McDonald's one time, and a lady asked him. He ordered a quarter pounder, and she asked him, "Would you like cheese on that?" And he hollered at her, "If I don't want it, cheese, I don't ask for cheese." Yeah. You know? And so when, when it you came, get old, you do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can testify. But when it came my turn to make an order, I ordered a quarter pounder, and she didn't ask me <laughs> if I wanted cheese with mine. But one time we were by his house swimming. We just got out of church. He went to a different church, so he gets out a little bit later than we do, and we are swimming. And he comes with his nice clothes on. He believes you had a dress and tuxedo and all oh, go to yeah, church. Yeah, old school. Okay. <laughs> and he tells he tells us, stop swinging on that rope swing because I'm about to change these filters. And he bent over to change that filter, and we swung on that rope swing. You know, we were eight, so we didn't listen. And, I mean, hit him right in the backside and into the pool he went. <laughs> and their, their house is shaped in, like, the shape of a U, so you can see the swimming pool from any room, and it's all glass in the middle. And my grandmother was in the kitchen, and somehow, I think it's the Philip thing, but she transported from the kitchen, <laughs> flung the yeah, door open. Like Philip in the Bible. <laughs> That's right. And she looked at us and said, run. <laughs> run for your life. You know? Run, kids, run. <laughs> That's right. So, so we did. <laughs> he come out and not saying Sunday school words, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and the phone was ringing by the time we got home. My dad said, hey, Grandpa said it's okay. Y'all go swimming again. But, you know, we didn't care too much about swimming at that, <laughs> that point anymore. But... But yeah, I think about that. Even though we disobeyed my grandfather, he still loved us. Oh, yeah. You know, I think yeah. about that with fathers. That's, and- that's stormy when uh, it's really strange, too. Fatherhood's such a strange thing, pointing to God. Stormy was, my wife was, I'll tell this story real quickly. Yeah. My wife was great with child, and uh, <laughs> she's short, you know, and so, boy, when she got pregnant, she was. I saw her set her plate on her stomach one time at a fellowship meeting, just eating that, and she was standing up. And, uh, <laughs> She, but it came one night, and how we named her Stormy, it came one night, and it was, 
I used to sing a song in the in back in the days playing in the band called Stormy Monday Blues, and uh, and and it was a real stormy night. And Sharon woke me up and said it's time, and it was. So we took off to the hospital, and uh, it was just stormy like everything. That's how we came up with the name Stormy. And I went in there. I had to. I let her out, and I had to go park the car. I put the emergency thing. I had to go park the car, and it came back. And then when I got back, that's how close it was. The nurse jumped out and said. You got a little girl. You want to see her? And I went, yeah, I guess. And so I was still in shock. And so uh, they rolled her out in that little glass cage they put them in, you know. Yeah. And uh, I I didn't know her. I had not met her before. They, we had not spoken. She hadn't done cute little things and grabbed my finger and walked back and forth with her to get her to sleep. Nothing. Mm-hmm. There was nothing she'd done. I didn't know that ugly stranger because she's the <laughs> ugliest kid i ever seen. Boy, her head... Her head was somehow it had been a rough trip out, and her head was her head her face was long, it scrunched up somehow. I don't know if she was purple color, like ET. And I, I just said, I looked at that ugly stranger in that cage, and something happened in my heart. Mm. And buddy, I would have died for her that second, yeah. right there, mm. right there. I mean, I didn't know her. Why in the world? So I just at, in a moment. That she was my heart. Mm, that's right. And uh, still is today. Mm, amen. And that's the way God is toward us. I mean, we're his child, and we're so ugly to his beauty. Mm. When we come here in school, we get more growing like him. Yeah. And uh, and on the inside, that growth I'm talking about, you know that. But he don't care anything about where he is. And from that second, he, he, he would die for us. Wait a minute. He did. That's right. Amen. Thankful for that. You pastor a church. That's right. You country, what church, man? Choctaw Christian Church. Come on. Yeah. Good, That's man. the one, yeah. Good. That's the first time I, I met you a while ago, but I'll shake your hand again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I didn't know you was a pastor. You, you're very young looking. But then again, when you're 80, everybody's yeah. young looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jordan used to, uh, he used to come to church here. Mm-hmm. And I thought I'd seen you before. Mm-hmm. I thought I'd seen you before. Right. A whole lot younger then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you think I look young now? <laughs> yeah. So he he's at Choctaw Christian Church now and yeah. doing a doing a great job. I think that's just great, man. Yeah. A lot of a lot of ministry happening now. He was sharing. I don't know. We want to go into it on the podcast today, but he was sharing that the youth group is going well and some ministries happening there and different things and all. So yeah, good deal, man. Yeah, yeah, exciting things happening over there. And I'll tell you, I didn't do nothing over there. (laughs) That's all the work of God. I'm just here to bear witness to it. (laughs) Ain't that the truth? Uh, That's just the way it is. Yeah, that's how it goes. If you'd ask me what I wanted to be when I was young, the last thing I'd say was a preacher. My daddy was a Nazarene preacher, and so Mm -hmm. my father, my earthly father, was a Nazarene preacher, and and I saw all the things he had to go through as a pastor and everything. And, and, uh, you know, I didn't... uh, I liked him, but he was the only preacher I did like. The rest of them scared me to death, told me I'd go into hell every time they preach. You know, and so, and my dad did some too. So, you know, it was that kind of hellfire and brimstone uh, yeah. church. Of course, that's true, that part of it. But I think we majored on the, uh, on the, majored on the negative more than we did the positive and how much he loved us. But uh, he, 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 I don't know how I got into this. Where was, what was I telling you? See, it's the old man knows it. <laughs> now I was telling you something about just being a, uh, a pastor's son, you know, yeah. and a father. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll tell you, I appreciate my earthly father, and he really pointed me towards my heavenly father so I can know more about, about God and, and that God loves me. Um, but in this community, and I don't know, maybe some of you had the same experiences, we have a lot of fatherless homes and a lot of people who the I guess their view of their earthly father isn't a positive thing and maybe they struggle a little bit with you know the idea of a heavenly father and who can that be and you know what when you're a father and I'm sure God I don't know if I can relate to him that way because he makes no mistakes and he's always aware and he knows everything Mm -hmm. before it happens he is the beginning he is the end but sometimes I know there's a thing where you raise your children and you tell them the things you want to, but they turn out like they're going to turn out, you know? And, and it's sometimes I feel like, oh, some of mine, some of the things that they went through, I tried to stop them from going through. I could see it coming. Yeah, They went through a divorce. I could see it coming. 
I knew it was going to happen, mm. but I couldn't tell them anything. And when it happened, it did. And they, you know, God gets them through it the way he's supposed to do it. But And he knew. But it, it is a, a, to be a father is a trip, too. Yeah. You know, and uh, then raising your kids. Uh, I, I had uh, Summer. Mm -hmm. Summer was... Uh, She's up in Washington, and uh, actually, she's a principal of a, a, a tribal school. Okay, but, but I like two thousand kids in it. She's 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 superintendent there, and uh, when when she was little, though, she she was how shall I say this? She's great now. She's great, but when she was little, she was the uh, whiningest, complainingest child that's ever graced the planet. <laughs> but um, you could see her. She just all the time we could pick her up from school, and uh, I'd send her off to school. She's happy. Oh, I love my school, you know. And I'm 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 kind of a hippie back then. Everything. Won't you skip today, babe? No, that's my school. I love her. I love my school, you know, and that type of thing. And so, uh, but I'd see her coming when I'd pick her up from school, and she's like, and I go, "What's the matter? What's the matter, little girl?" And she she'd be like. She's gonna tell me she'd be like, Well my teacher and they did this and the other kids laughed at me because they said mm -hmm. You know, there she's whining like everything and, and and just drive me crazy because I ain't a whiner and her mother's not a whiner. I don't know why she'd do that like that. But you know what? She uh she could be she'd make me so upset sometimes. <laughs> just you know, you go to church and and one of them be whining in the car and you gotta preach in a few minutes and they all and then it's loud in the car. We was a big family in a little small car, and we all okay. packed in there going yeah. to church. And and some would be doing their whining. You know, I wanted, I didn't want to wear the church dress to church. You know, <laughs> I want to wear my blue jeans. Oh, and yeah. uh, and so you know, we go down and say, "Shut up, Summer." You know, because <laughs> and Stormy, turn the radio off, Stormy. And then we'd just be stupid tourists in front of us, you know, and we're just mad when you get to church. Kids make a hypocrite out of you. You, play, you got any kids? <laughs> I got three. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They may be a hypocrite because I'll be so mad when everybody just, shut up, shut up. We're going in and worship. You know, and so some we get into church and I'd be like, praise God, people, how you doing? Put that flag <laughs> smile on, you know. But kids drive you crazy, but she could, it could be, she could be driving me crazy as everything. Summer could, you know what? Just like I said. I'd die for her in a second. Yeah. She make, and I'm sure we drive God crazy sometimes. If he, you know, he doesn't, I, that's a bad way of saying it, but he said in one place, I don't get weary. And in another place, and it, behind the Bible, it says, you have weary yeah, me. Yeah, you have weary So me. if everybody can do it, it's your kid. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter. He would die for us in a second. Again, he did. That's he right. Did. That's right. And I think, you know, a lot of people want to say the Old Testament is about God's justice and wrath and the New Testament about his love, but Old Testament about his love too. And we can see that all, all throughout. I remember um, when Judy and I first got married, we had this toaster and usually a toaster, you push the button and it'll pop your toast up or whatever. Well, this one wouldn't, no matter how much you yanked on it. And it was a bad thing. And however far you put it to the, you know, white side or whatever, it would always burn your toast. And then you couldn't pop it up. This went oh, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah this went on for like three years, right? Well, one day I happened to notice, I think my mom was visiting and she told me about this button kind of tucked away on the side and you push it, your toast will pop up. Well, this surprised me. I didn't know about it. So I was telling my wife, I was all excited. I said, Hey, I found out about this button on a toaster. You push it, your toast pops up. And she said, Oh, you didn't you didn't know about that button? I'm like, no, I didn't know about it. She goes, well, What have you been doing all these years? I've been burning my toes, burning toes you know? man. <laughs> but but the button was there the whole time. I guess is my point, That's and it's just point. like God's God's love. It was there the whole time in the Old Testament. I remember when Paul comes to salvation, he begins to preach, you know, yeah. the gospel, and so he saw it in the Old. He he had missed it at first, but then he saw it. God's love is all you know evident throughout yeah, the whole. And Bible. I think it's it's uh, you know, we tend to separate Jesus and God maybe a little too much. Yeah. I know He's the Son, the only begot, He's God's only begotten self. I like to say. Because he, uh, but, you know, we say, well, Jesus, and Jesus came and said, here's, I'm showing you the Father. If mm -hmm. you've seen me, you've seen, this is the way the Father is. So, That's right. You know, we think he's not loving in the Old Testament. It was just a whole different covenant. The the grace covenant and the, and the law was 
different as daylight mm -hmm. and dark. That's right. And I lasted on the law probably about 15 minutes, and that bit just be over. I thank <laughs> God for grace, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what? How, how long is this, this thing we're doing? We we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes we we talk. Along. I well, got time. Two more stories. I, I don't want to take up your time. No, no you're okay. Go ahead. You do it with him a lot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we okay. podcast well, then together. I'll take often. up your time. Yeah, you okay. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> no, man, I tell you about Sky, now, okay. my oldest son, and uh, <clears throat> my youngest son. He's up in uh, he's up in Nashville now. He's a musician. Okay, and, uh, all that kind of stuff. And, and but he is a kid. He's oh just year old two years old you know just crawling and stuff yeah he had uh and this i love this illustration he had a horrible habit in his life we don't know what that's like do we <laughs> and uh he had a horrible habit in his life and and uh it was something that it was it was an abomination to us like some of ours is to god there's okay. another thing going on here see yeah and uh and we would do everything we could to keep him from doing that habit because it was very sickening and I'd like for people that's listening to this or watching whatever to understand how we felt when this habit occurred. Mm. Uh, Sky, he liked crickets. Okay. I don't mean he liked crickets. I mean he liked crickets. Okay. They, they were. It was an acquired taste, really. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and he would, uh, you know, in in 1985, I think it was, it was uh, crickets were plentiful, and he didn't care if it was a light chocolate cricket or dark chocolate cricket or occasional green lime you know yeah, yeah. he just liked crickets mm. and we would he would be one in the house or somewhere and we'd see him taking off after that cricket just and we we're trying to stop him <laughs> he's fast little booger boy he's crawling <laughs> trying to get to that cricket and and when he got it he he he, he didn't wait he knew he was going to take it from him he yeah. didn't want to take it his his tidbit from him and so he ain't but shoot right out i mean he's two two and a half years old or whatever it was hand would shoot right out shoo, Straight to his mouth. Yeah, fast. And we couldn't say, and we just we was close enough to hear it crunch as he brought it to <laughs> But we couldn't say, okay, he won, he's got a cricket. We had to get that thing out of there, you know. So we reaching in his mouth, man, yeah. and bringing out legs and eye over here and yellow looking gooky stuff, you know. We just pulling it out, man, and we all gagging while we're doing it, you know. And we clean him up and get it off his mouth and everything. You think that changed my love for him one bit in the world? Mm. In a few minutes, I'm just hugging him just like everything. That's right. And you know what? We got some horrible habits in our life. That's right. Now, Sky, I, I knew he would overcome that, and he don't eat crickets anymore. Yeah, amen. And, you know, <laughs> but if he did, I'd still love him. Mm -hmm. And we, a lot of us have got crickets in our life after years. We still got some abominational habits in our life that we hate. Mm. Yet we are habited to it, and we do it. Uh, if everybody's listening to this now, they're getting kind of quiet, because that's the truth. We mm. all got them, buddy. And until we become get enough of him in us, we try to quit, try to quit, try to quit, and you're never going to as long as you're concentrating on quitting doing that thing. But if when you start longing for more of him and less of you, mm less dying to who I am that he can be resurrected who he is in me yeah. he doesn't have a sin problem we have a sin problem and so when as we have more of him and less of us we have less sin mm -hmm. and we just that's the concentration on have more of him but when Sky would do that habit you think it changed my love for him one bit in the mm -hmm. world and if he was still doing it I'd still love him that's right you know and that's the way God is toward us he sees our struggle he sees what's got us habited to it, mm -hmm. and he sees where it came from in our past. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sees all that because, like I said, he's all-powerful, all-knowing. And uh, if you get right down to it when we get real heavy, we're seated with him in heavenly places already, so mm -hmm. we look out. <laughs> you know, he don't. Know. Somebody says, well, does God know if you're going to make it or not? Well, we're seated with him in heavenly places. I guess he does. Oh, that's really deep stuff. But it's true. It's all in the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Am I preaching too much? No. Well, I'll try harder then. No, that, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> preach a little more. I know. So Jordan has three children as as well. Um, and his first two children, it just kind of a great illustration of what God has, has done for You want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Jordan? The yeah. Our uh, first two kids um, are not our biological kids, but they're our kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're ours. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we signed up for uh, foster care with the 
Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians. And those were the first two that ended up in our house, and they stayed there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, they've they been really good to us. They've been a blessing to us. And there's been a lot of challenges. Um, Have you got one of your own, too? Uh, yeah, the third, yeah, third one, Walker, is our own. We had him in 2022, yeah. and... Yeah, yeah, we had uh, Zendaya. She's she's the younger of the girls. Uh, she, she was five years old. Already potty trained, and uh, and 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 yeah, they were both great. But uh, we we skipped that you know baby and diaper stage, and I was okay with that. <laughs> and it hit you hard. Walker, Walker came along, <laughs> couldn't get away. Diaper and, and stage, and was a Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> baby missed his diaper again. Yeah. Well, my wife and I. <laughs> You know where Walker's going. I mean, I don't know if your babies all did this, but they just make that face. Yeah, oh yeah. And Terry and I will immediately look at each other and go, nose goes. <laughs> <laughs> Not it. Um, and uh, that's how we decide who changes the diaper. Is. Yeah. <laughs> nose goes. Yeah. Before I had children, Judy was pregnant, and we, we knew baby was coming. I always said, I don't mind changing diapers. I'm going to help out, but... Once they're old enough to kind of talk to you while you're doing it, that's just... It's time to change it, yeah. Yeah, that's strange Storm. to me. I mean, you don't want to be changing a diaper and talking to you. Stormy is a good man. Stormy, <laughs> when she is about, I don't know, she's just learning to talk and everything. She's talking pretty good, but still had a diaper. You know, I guess she's two and a half, three mm -hmm. years old. I don't know how many. She, If she was here, she'd kill me for telling you all this. <laughs> but but uh, one day she got up, got up, came up there, went and got a diaper. Got on the bed, put her legs apart, and said, Daddy, change my diaper. Uh -huh. I said, that's it, buddy. You old yeah. enough right now. Yeah. And I always thought that, that that's weird whenever yeah. they could talk they to you. But now we had three children, and they were all talking before they were finished. Oh, yeah, yeah. But now that, so I've always said it was it was going to be weird. And now that I have three children, I got to say it. I was right. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. And you're glad they kind of grow out of that. Oh, but when they get older, though, you know what? I wonder how God is about this. I was such a... When, when I got saved, I was such a baby, you know, <laughs> yeah. such a baby, learning to walk. And I walk a little bit and fall, you know, he mm -hmm. wasn't surprised when I fell. It was just like Sky, when he had learned to walk, he, I'd been real surprised. He just took off walking, man, he yeah, fell, yeah. and then I'd help him up and everything. If he hurt himself, I cared even more when he fell, you know. And I was such a baby being falling like that all the time. And uh, God, he just, he loves us while we're learning to walk. Mm, and, amen. And, uh, I started off with one story and left that and, and went to another one. So that's yeah. enough of that. Yeah. But as we're talking about Jordan's uh, situation, just remind me of God's love that he's adopted us as his yeah. his children, that's you know, and, and what an amazing thing that is. Yeah. It's, it's so, that is such a hard scripture to understand because we're really his children. He puts that mm -hmm. spirit of God in us yeah. just like it was in the Jewish people, you know, just... And, and and when we have his spirit, we we become one of his chosen people. I'm not going to get into the Israel, spiritual Israel thing. That's a big deal, right? Yeah. I just know I'm adopted because I'm a in a I'm a I'm a Israel I'm a Israel in a Gentile body, which is a thing. But I, you know, he knew from the beginning I was going to be oh sure his child. So I, I it's such a deep thing to get into that. But all I know is you love those others. Mm -hmm. Just like you love yours. Amen. Maybe it's a little different. I had an adopted one, Darby, our uh, oldest one. And uh, he, 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 we adopted him. He was Sharon's little boy before I met her. And uh, she had him when she was 16. We, we lived a life when we got saved, you know. And uh, so I adopted him and raised him. You know, as far as I knew, I was just like the, just like the other ones. Maybe... I was a little more attentive to him okay. because he was the one that wasn't my, now he was Sharon's rhythm, but wasn't my biological child. So I think maybe I was even more uh, observant of that. He might even felt that and not liked it sometimes because, <laughs> he, you know, I'd get on to my other kids and I was careful to him with him. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, uh, so finally, I got where I wasn't careful of none of them. I just <laughs> gonna whip you off, <laughs> <laughs> which we never hardly did. But it's yeah. a couple times they got whipping. And I got one though that that uh, I don't even know how to make it an illustration. My first daughter, her name was uh, Shay. Yeah. And you notice I used past tense there. He, yeah. her name was Shay. I don't know what the angels call her. And uh, 
she was 19 and she was killed in a car wreck. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how this goes with God because he don't lose a child. But, uh, you know, he, he if we're his, I believe he keeps us. Mm. But uh, I, 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 I went through eternally secure and, and he, I believe being eternally secure is a little more than it. <laughs> uh, not eternally secure, you know, but I don't know. So we, all I know is he's got me and, uh, and ain't gonna let me go because he never has. Mm. But when you lose one, when you lose a child, there ain't a pain like that anywhere. It goes, it don't just stop here. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about, when I, they called us and told us that she was gone. She was on a trip to see her boyfriend out in Houston. Okay. And she was going to marry him, and and uh, she ran off the car, left the car one time. They drove the car away. I mean, it was not messed up. Just she took a blow to the head. She was gone. Mm. And, uh, man, when they told me on a, on a Thursday, and then I had to somehow try to sleep a little bit that night. We had a lot of hard days ahead of us. Yeah. I slept about two hours somehow. I went to sleep so tired, you know. Yeah. And when I woke up, I have never felt a pain like that. And I don't want to ever feel one again. It can scar you for life, and it does. It does. Mm -hmm. For life, it scars you because you get phone calls, and it'll scare you. And you will you and you never want to feel that again because it don't just stop here. It goes clean to eternity. It just on and on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, man, I realized how, what God must have felt, although he knew he would resurrect in three yeah. days. I didn't know that, so. Yeah, I know that Jesus is the resurrection of life, and, mm -hmm. and I'll see her again someday. But boy, the pain there of of seeing one die, mm -hmm. and and uh, going all through all that. Uh, I, there's just no describing it. I see parents all the time that they lose they lose one, and it either either stops their life right there, or somehow mm -hmm. or another they go ahead. And I, I made up my mind because with God and with Shay, I knew she went when she was supposed to go. That gave me peace. Yeah. That uh, I'm glad that God, I learned that he was in control and he had the keys to life and death. Yeah. But uh, but th at the time, that didn't really help very much. Mm, to know hurting. these things, I knew it, but it didn't help the pain very much. But now, as I talk about it, it's sweet sorrow now when I think about it. I, mm. Every once in a while, I'll shed some tears, even now, which is, was that was in 1991. Yeah. And uh, it's still, if I get her stuff out and look at it, some of the things that she did, I kept them, you know, or the funeral thing, the funeral. Boy, it brings it all back. I'll be crying like a baby. Mm -hmm. I do it on her, on her birthday and on her death day, which was August the 1st, 1991. Wow. You, you lose a child. I tell you, when I was going to young people all the time, you remember that. And uh, you were one of them. And <laughs> I, I we're tell, we're I, one. <laughs> I tell them, uh, just... Uh, you, your parents, you hold their whole life in your hands, guys, when you go out and think, yeah. mm -hmm. when you're speeding around in the car and doing all the things you, we do as young people. You, you, you change lives forever wow. that way. Mm -hmm. So to be, always be careful because, I don't know, I, I just uh, somehow it always illustrates what the Father must have been feeling while Christ is on the cross. And he knew he was going to resurrect. Yeah, yeah. And, and Christ knew it too, but still laying on the cross. On the cross, he's saying, you know, why have you forsaken me? Because mm -hmm. it was prophesied he'd say that, but he meant it when he said it. He wasn't faking it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. If you're sweating blood in the garden, you ain't kidding. You're going through it. Yeah. yeah. I hope this is okay, man. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I think it's a good good message, yeah. I remember, so one of the first messages I ever heard you preach was a Father's Day message um some of this was probably in it probably at this cricket message probably was in there yeah might have been but i remember you used the the passage you know behold what manner of love the father has. Oh, i love that behold what manner of love the father has given unto us that we should be called the children of god and then, then i love the next part we're children now listen to this part mm -hmm. this is a good passage. we're children of god it does not yet appear what we shall be we ain't gonna stay children but when he shall appear we shall be like him. That's right. And everyone that has that hope in him purifies himself. You don't have to. That's, a lot of people think, well, y'all better get pure then. No, if you just have that hope to be like, that's the greatest thing you could ever think of is being like him. He sees your heart and that yeah. purifies you in his eyes. I love those scriptures, man. Well, you tell that. Now, yeah. Well, you got me going. You want to start it. <laughs> yeah. But I remember you, you really kind of brought out some powerful points at the beginning of that message about, um, 
It doesn't say behold what manner of love the the drill sergeant. The drill sergeant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that, but but God's a father and he yeah. he loves us. Yeah. I right, see for years I saw him as a drill sergeant, and you better walk in line. You know. That's why I said, and that's kind of the way I was raised in the church I was raised in. You know, they were so strict. I couldn't live up to the standards, you know. For one thing, I wasn't saved yet, but I went up, when they give invitations, I'd go up. I went up many a time. I don't want to burn. That was my that was my prayer, you know, till I finally saw behind the drill sergeant and saw the smile of God, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Jordan, you got anything to, to add? Any good stories or whatever from your your children? Man, I ain't got any good stories yet. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> oh, I'm no. sure they'll come. Oh, I got a 13-year-old, and I got a well, you got almost 11-year-old. You got a 13-year-old. You're, you're getting close to having some yeah. good stories. What he's saying is he ain't got any good stories he can share. My, my daughter, Summer, you know, the, the one is the principal of the school up there. So I was telling her about some uh, Tennessee uh, Stormy's granddaughter and, and, and daughter, and some of the things they was going through. And, and her, Stormy's daughter is, uh, you know, is, is 13. Okay. And some things, she, you know, rebellion and some things she's going through that I was telling about. And Summer said, let me tell you something, Daddy. 13 to 16-year-old people are the worst people on earth. <laughs> <laughs> I started laughing. I said, well, y'all wouldn't. She said, yes, we were. Yes, we were. You just didn't know it. Oh, uh, yeah. But that's all right. The Father loves them, don't he? Yeah. Amen. No matter what. No matter what. Amen. I know a... Uh, a great brother, he was headmaster and principal of schools many, many years, and he's retired now. But he told me one time, he said, he thinks from seventh grade to eighth grade, children just don't need to go to school. They already think they know everything. What they need to do is get out and start That's doing some hard to work. Out, get a job and go yeah. to work. Yeah. And, and learn that, that some of this stuff might not be what you want to do the rest of your life. And then you come back to high school and you're finally ready to learn again. <laughs> I told Sky one time, when I when you was 10 years old, I was the greatest person in the world. You got 13. I was the stupidest man ever walked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so but good. you know what? Now he's close to 40, and I think he thinks I'm the greatest person in the world you yeah know. It, it came back around yeah, I, I know it was with my dad that way too yeah yeah and you know what us as fathers i know we gotta go but no okay. us as fathers we need to be careful what we say to our kids too that's right i remember my daddy used to say some things to me and he didn't mean anything about it he wanted me to cut the yard you know and i'd be trying to get out of him and he'd say things like you're lazy you're just no good you think the world owes you a living you're just, he's a good christian good preacher but you know parents get mad you're just sorry get out there and cut the yard like i told you and he didn't know it, but it was killing me. Yeah. It was, you know, I was going like, I didn't care, but I cared. And I remembered all these. That's how I turned into the sorry person you see before me. <laughs> it was, no, you know, you carry that with you for a while. And I did some thing, think that to my kids. Mm. You know, Stormy, I got, I got to tell you this, and then I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> did you have to look and make sure she wasn't here? I had a bunch of kids, okay. <laughs> but, uh, one time she asked me, she was 15, and she asked me something, said, Daddy, did you want me before I was born? And naturally, I, you know, I told you how I looked at her, and the, there she was, you know, you yeah. love her. Thing. But before she was born, she didn't exist. Right. You know, how can I live? I'm a, oh, I wish there was a stormy, you know. Yeah. And I thought, before you was born? No. Oh, it killed her. She started crying. Still holds that against me to this day. <laughs> She's been almost 50 years old. She'd be like, she'd be like, well, you didn't want me before I was born. I said, that'd be like me saying I want Clarence. There wasn't a Clarence. Yeah. You know, how can I want them? But anyway, she, one day for her birthday, I made her a plaque and put it in her frame. It put, I wanted you before you were born. And she put it, she hung it on the wall and said she still didn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Well, And I'll tell you what's amazing to me. It's, it's important to raise your children correctly, teach them correctly, inspire good things in them, not, yeah. not all these bad things. Because some of that becomes self-fulfilling if you keep calling them lazy and bad sometimes they can start doing things they can, that they can feel like they're yeah, no good yeah that's right and, and, gotta and, be careful what we and, say to and them. that hurts them but uh all my children they're wonderful i i love eating each one of them all three of them and they're so different than one another they're the same parents <laughs> they grew up under the same I kind of it. rules the I same household it. and you different know just, daylight and dark yeah just so so different um, Mac, I, I love Mac. He's our oldest, and he's very quirky. He loves gadgets. He, How old is Mac now? Mac is nine. And you don't just go to the store and buy Mac a toy. 
He wants a fan. He wants a light. He wants, you know, gadgets. That's what he yeah, does. He it, does yeah. Oh, yeah. But he's always been like that. He's been collecting fans since he was a little bitty guy. And um, Karis, she's very, very smart, but she's not like a, a book person. She's more conceptual. She likes to observe things and like tell that. you about I things. Like and, yeah, yeah. 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 She, she's very much like that. Where, where Mac, he, he's observant too, but boy, you give him a book and he'll. And Leo, he's only five and he's, he is, I think he's brilliant with math. Mac will holler out, you know, what's 13 plus 15, you know, and Leo, and Mac's doing his homework, right? Yeah. 13 plus 15, and Leo just holler out and answers, you know, that's, that's 28 or that's whatever. And Mac goes, all right, and he's starting right now, like, Mac, hold on now. Your five-year-old brother cannot be doing your homework. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's important to... I believe it's 28. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might be wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. But, no, it's just... Uh, yeah, we need to teach teach our children. I, I know, I and, and and I'll tell you something. Let's do the other thing too. If there's any kids and young people listen, y'all be careful what you say to your parents too. We're we're human beings, <laughs> yeah. you know, and they, they, you 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 get that look in your eye, just that hate look in your eye. And some of me, some camp kids even say, "I just hate you," you know, and stuff like that to their parents. And that's just that natural bay in them at thirteen. But boy, it kills the parents. They think you really do, and you don't. Yeah, if something happened to one of them. You'd see. I crushed you were. So that's, that's things young people need to listen to, too. I, I've run into all of it through yeah. the years. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'm sure that uh, is probably applicable to the way we treat God, too. We need to. Yeah, yeah. Because I know. We get mad I, at him. Yeah. We get mad at him. Well, I know y'all never have. I'm sure. Perfect like y'all are, but I've gotten mad at him. No, man. I've yeah. gotten mad at him. I've yeah. gotten mad at him before, you know. Yeah. He can take it, though. Dave Busby. I don't know if you know who he is or not. He was a great, great preacher. He passed away not long ago. He said he had cystic fibrosis, and he also was, had polio. So okay. he was the greatest preacher I've ever heard just about yeah. it. Oh, he's anointed, a teacher of grace. He said one time he got so mad at God, he just took a mattress and played like it was God's chest, and he just started hitting on it, beating on it, beating on it, until he finally got tired, and he just laid over on the mattress, and he felt God put his arms around him, mm -hmm. you know, and, Carry on my wayward son, so to speak, you know. Yeah, that's good. Don't act like you don't know that song. You know that song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kansas song. <laughs> <laughs> that dude, one of that dude became a youth pastor for church. So one, I think the one that, that wrote the song, they tell me. Hmm. A, oh, a, the guitar player. His, yeah, he's a Christian. Carrie Livgren. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. a Christian now. Yeah. Not, not that I know him. I, I don't no, know yeah. the band. Yeah. <laughs> You've heard. Yeah, I'm not You've familiar heard. with him. <laughs> A friend of yours told you. Yeah, yeah, a friend told a friend is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> we be great pretenders, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, man, we remember. That's one of my favorite songs. I hear it now. I turned it up. I love it. That's right. Yeah, I saw uh, Kansas perform a few different times back when I was running sound and yeah, different things. Yeah, I never so saw them, man. I'd love to. I'd mm -hmm. love to. Yeah. I, I always liked, and we got off the subject here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what we are. I always liked Paul Rogers, the singer for uh, Bad Company okay. was the name of the group and uh, a group called Free you know All Right Now I know you know that song everybody mm -hmm. All Right Now and I had a chance one time to go see them in Tupelo but I had prayer meeting the same night I did the prayer meeting and yeah, missed, well, and that's, that's right now I wish I'd just trust in God's grace and went <laughs> <laughs> I'd have probably got there and said I shouldn't have done this that's right yeah yeah no we <laughs> Yeah, we do make sacrifices to do do what's right, and the same things with children. We we sacrifice for our children. So. You better. Hey, good point. Good point. Yeah. Just. Well, do we have any any final words? I pretty much said a whole lot. Yeah, I I appreciated you coming and all the stories you had to tell. Uh, a lot of really funny stories. Yeah, <laughs> at your kids' expense. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Not when they were happening. <laughs> yeah, they weren't funny, they when, weren't they were funny when they were happening. <laughs> funny <laughs> after the fact. He's eating crickets. We weren't giggling. <laughs> that's right. Thanks, man. I Parents these days, <laughs> they get it on film and then <laughs> then get it out of his mouth. <laughs> oh yeah, but back in the day, you could have had video and pictures oh, and everything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, just yeah, grab your you phone. Know. You know, had the cell phone. We'd had it all on tape. Yeah, and said, "See, I ain't lying." Yeah, and we're interested. I know this is off the subject, but we're entering into a new era where probably in my lifetime, as I get older, whoever's running for president, their whole life is going to be on the internet. Oh. You're going to be able to find childhood pictures and any, anything their parents posted on oh, Facebook they when they were growing back up. When they're 12 years old, it's going to be used against them, man. That's what I'm saying. My dad used to say, of course, he passed away, he died away at 91, you know. 
And he, he used to say, any child in this country can grow up to be president. It's just a chance he has to take. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Oh, that's good, yeah. Well, we do want to let people know Pastor Joe also has a new book out. You want to say anything about your, your oh, book? Yeah, I got one. It's uh it's called A Final Rest in Place. It is a it is a western that goes eastern. Okay. That, <laughs> that goes it's through time, the same people, their family type of thing. It's a sequel of three. And I wrote different books, three different books, and we'll put them together. And let me say this too. If you get one, if you want one, you can always get in touch with me and I get you one. But and Russ can tell you how, and uh, I ain't gonna try to sell them or anything here. I just, uh, but they're twenty dollars if you want one. No, listen, <laughs> to, listen to this. I want to be clear on it, and I've had to test people. It's a western. It's a Christian western, but it don't start. I mean, it's got Christian. Everybody ends up with the Lord before it's over, but it's rough in some places. I mean, you got you got uh, cowboys and Indians, so to speak, going on back there, and uh, so it's got some stuff in it. You, know, I, it don't start. It's a I call it Christian historical fiction with a Christian fiction slant. And it's got a lot of truth in it, but uh, I didn't start it off this way. Hey, Tex, is that a Bible in your saddlebags there? You know, it don't start <laughs> off that way. It starts off with fighting and shooting. It's a Western, and it's a fiction book, you yeah. know. So I don't want people to get it and think, well, I'm on, you know, I'm fixing to read the Bible here. No, it's not. It's not. Yeah. I'm, I'm a... I'm a Christian writer. I'm a writer that's Christian, but I'm not. And everything I can, no matter how I try, it's going to go back to that before it's over with. You can't get away from it. Mm. And one, one, the second one, he's just the guy. Don't know if he believes in God at all. He's a good guy, but he's had a lot of things happen. He, yeah. you, know, you know, and then finally he's a believer. And the first one, the guy, the meanest guy in there, ends up being a preacher <laughs> and a pastor, the toughest guy in there. And he's, you know, he's done crimes and stuff. But, and then the last one, he's, he's on a mission. The whole thing is a mission. Let me shut up about the book. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. It's a final resting place, and I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned it. But I wasn't going to. So yeah. Then. Well, we'll put the link on the description here. People can right. get it from Amazon. My dad bought it, and he he actually I bought it too, but I didn't read it yet. But my dad read the whole thing. You ain't he gonna said, read it. He See, said, it. "Look at you, just like everybody else." Said, <laughs> yeah. We don't read these days. People don't read. Yeah. That's reading books a million. It's closing down everywhere. Oh, they are. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm still a reader, yeah. and I'm not an electronic reader. Nothing against that, but that's not my style. I like paper and books. One of the ladies at the church got it, and she said, "I was reading it. I like to read, but it's pretty rough." <laughs> now, I ain't got to cuss in anything like that, you know, but, but I didn't do that. I didn't go that far, but but it's it's tough. They shooting at each other and stuff because yeah. that's the way it was. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the way it is yeah. still Maybe sometimes. It's a lot about Apaches, which I'm on their side, and uh, but still it's the, there's a battle that's going on between them. It's a lot about Geronimo and the thing in his life. And I've okay. studied him. If you need an expert on Geronimo, I'm probably one. Okay. Long story there, too, how I got into that, but. Yep. Okay, that's enough about that. All right, very good. Well, Jordan, Are we yeah, you had any part in thought? All right, I'll, I'll see y'all. All right. <laughs> well, we out of here. Yep. This is, so I'm, I'm Pastor Ruskin. I'm Pastor Jordan. Jordan, and I'm Geronimo. Geronimo. <laughs> no, the I'm, Spotted Hawk. I'm Pastor Joe Shelton. Yeah, that's right. And so uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. If you asked me if I was pastor, if you told me I was going to be a pastor when I was, you know, 19 and playing rock and roll all over the place, I told you, <laughs> you are insane. <laughs> It's the last thing I'm going to be. God had other ideas in it. Well, amen. 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 You know, people say, how hey, you call yourself a pastor and got that long hair? It's short now. You used to be learning. I, I said, well, you, I, I know. I said, you know what he told Samson? Yeah, he told me the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. Very good. All right. Well, blessings to you. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. This is the Remnant Thoughts Podcast with Ruskin and Jordan. 